Hello and welcome to What's Happening. In this regular roundup, Real Media and Phoenix Media Cooperative have teamed up to provide unashamedly internationalist and subversive news highlighting the work of people who are organising to forge a better world. This week, we start by looking at some of the people who are demanding climate justice. Representatives from the Adivasi Indigenous community in India marched in Glasgow on the 6th of November's Global Day of Action for Climate Justice to condemn the Indian government's land grabs and environmental destruction. The Ugandan branch of the Eastern and Southern Africa Small Scale Farmers Forum, which focuses on advancing economic empowerment, agroecology and food sovereignty, said that it joined other indigenous communities, trade unions and feminist movements to demand climate justice, insisting that agroecology can provide serious solutions to the climate crisis in the form of climate mitigation and adaptation. Ugandan climate campaigner Vanessa Nakate described to a crowd in Glasgow how the changing climate is directly affecting people in her country, describing how they are dying, children are dropping out of school, farms are being destroyed. I come from Kampala, Uganda, a country that has one of the fastest changing climates in the world. At the London Climate March, Real Media interviewed Sarah Calloway from Women of Colour in the Global Women's Strike, who is calling for recognition and payment for the work done by carers of all sorts across the planet. She's working with the Land Workers Alliance to highlight the role of soil in fighting the climate and ecological crisis. We're part of the reparations block today because we need reparations for the millions and billions that have been stolen over centuries from the global south and people of color and working class people generally. We're bringing together farmers and human rights defenders because very often people who are working the land are under attack by security forces, by militaries, by armies, by police. There's a big focus on carbon, but in fact, the big issue is the soil. You know, the soil ha has got to be rebuilt and regenerated, and indigenous farmers across the world are doing that, and many of them are women. 70% of sub subsistence farmers are women, but that's not getting hardly any focus. We need to save the, the soil, the earth, the farmers, the land workers. In Andhra Pradesh, in India, the government is backing a program and they want payment for farmers who are changing back using traditional methods and what they call a soil sponge, where you, you rebuild the land and they're having fantastic results. So we're going to be talking about that here today and also at COP26. And we're demanding a care income for people, all genders, who look after people, the land, the soil and the planet. Also the weekend, Reverend Billy and the Stop Shopping Choir joined BP or Not BP at the British Museum in one of their performance protests. They are calling out the museum's sponsorship deal with the oil giant BP and linking the need for climate reparations with the demand to repatriate much of the plundered loot held within the museum's walls. Colonialism has ruled our souls. The British Museum refuses to return looted items such as the Benin bronzes. They are stolen. They are stolen. And brought back to places like this museum. And brought back to places like this Many countries in the Global South have been calling for reparations from countries like the UK that have, you know, historically emitted the most and are the biggest drivers in the climate crisis. Hallelujah! Thank you. 
Police in Glasgow, meanwhile, seem to think arresting an inflatable Loch Ness monster was a priority. In England and Wales, the percentage of people working on gig economy platforms like Uber and Deliveroo has more than doubled since 2016. But despite the precarity of app-based employment, grassroots unions are organising and fighting for better conditions and rights. The London IWGB Deliveroo section have been protesting in London today with a motorcade and rally. And couriers who work at Stuart Delivery in South Yorkshire are also threatening to go on strike. It's not just in the UK that gig economy workers are standing up for their collective rights. In Europe, undocumented workers around Paris went on strike. And in Spain, Uber workers in Euskadi, the Basque country, have also launched a strike to resist a range of injustices. We desperately need to reduce our emissions and insulating the homes of the UK is the most cost effective way for the government to do that. Insulate Britain blockaded Parliament for several hours on Thursday morning with some of them gluing hands or feet to the road. Insulate Britain's tactics will keep evolving as we go on and today we're outside of Parliament and it will be very, very interesting to see how much media attention we get. I expect very little. One of the activists faced arrest for the 12th time in a month. A repeat offender would normally be taken to court and remanded in prison until trial. But despite strong rhetoric from government and right-wing press, police sources have admitted that instructions from the very top are hampering their powers to curtail disruption. The police, they are as perplexed as us as to why we are not in prison. You know, they keep saying that we're just pestering ordinary people, but the truth is Pretty Patel could have taken us off the streets by now. We think it's possibly because COP is going on and it would not look good to have political prisoners at a time where Boris Johnson is trying to pretend he's uh, leading the world in the right direction. So they'd rather we annoyed normal people than made him look a bit bad. Instead, the Home Office appears to be relying on sweeping High Court injunctions, with nine activists summoned to court on the 16th of November. People breaking the injunction are risking unlimited fines and seizure of property. I know, I know a few people who have their own business who are risking everything for this. I don't want to go to prison, but I've got, I've got four grandchildren and it's it's their futures at the end of the day. The government's use of a civil injunction rather than existing laws, effectively curtailing the right to protest on any major roads throughout the UK, has triggered a response from Extinction Rebellion UK, who are supporting the Insulate Britain 9 with a protest at core and a mass action of resistance on the 20th. Nothing ever changed without a fight. So we're speaking out and reaching out to every woman who is free to talk. Please. Use your voice. The international peasants movement, La Via Campesina, is calling for a global day of action for the elimination of violence against women at the end of the month. They are encouraging actions to raise awareness, give visibility, stand in solidarity and denounce the alarming violence experienced by women, children and LGBTQIA plus people worldwide. A violence that has only worsened with the COVID-19 pandemic. Just two days after a virtual online festival on the 23rd of November, there will be hundreds of decentralised protests around the world on the 25th. In London, Million Women Rise are planning a vigil for women and non-binary people outside New Scotland Yard from 1pm to 3pm on the 25th of November. This woman's war is woman's work, the battle of a woman's worth. We birth nations, we are the matriarchs, the matrix. Fuck the systems that were built to break us, take us, beat us, rape us, enslave us. We will never end the war against the patriarchy. So that's all for this week's What's Happening. Remember, Real Media and Phoenix Media Cooperative have joined forces to bring you a weekly newsletter to keep you up to date with inspiring actions from around the world. You can subscribe in the link on the screen somewhere or down below. And we'd love you to check it out because there's so much to cover and we can't cover it all here in this video. So do check out the newsletter. Also, we'd love you to tell us whether there are any stories or issues that you'd like us to cover in upcoming newsletters as it shows. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, subscribe and share if you thought it was any good. It really helps us out and it really helps people find out about what's really going on, what's really happening. Thank you very much and join us again next week for more truly independent news.